I can't I even imagine me being congeniality. I could easily see me being edited to be the villain. <laughs> Don't you think? I could kind of see it. I could edit myself that way. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Mirror Mangle. And it's Scarlet Cyanide. And welcome to another Mangled Morning. Woo! Scarlett, how are you? I am great, gal. How are you? Good. I'm going for a little Jack Skellington today. Yeah. Officially Halloween month. This is Halloween. All of that. You got to get up into it. Mm -hmm. I, I used to really love Halloween a lot before I did drag. I break out like these types of characters, but it's not as exciting for me as I think it is most drag queens. So, like some drag queens still really get into it. I'm I mean, like, I'm characters yeah. all year round. <laughs> That's true. That's your thing. I mean, I think Halloween is very commonly referred to as queer Christmas. It is, yeah. yeah. Love that. One of the stories within Halloween is how like witches were per persecuted and there's a whole like that storyline that plays into it that is, yeah. feels queer. Yeah, it does. Kind of that trope that there's pride drag queens or, or Halloween. Halloween drag queens. Yeah. It's like when whenever you're kind of born <laughs> right, <laughs> or whatever. So, I mean, I'm sure this year there's going to be a birth to a lot of new baby drag queens. That's true. <laughs> oh, it's a celebration of birth. Yes. Oh. Speaking of celebration... These people smell like placenta, a lot of them. Miscongenialities. Oh. Today we're talking miscongenialities, and this was actually a suggestion. It was actually a tip by J.A. tipped me and said that we should do a miscongeniality video where we look at them based on where they ranked in the season, their placement in the season. And at first I was like, is that a video? Once I saw like a running theme of where people place and how often it occurs and when it's been occurring, I think it's kind of fun to look at. I love it. Especially because we're including the international ones. If there was an official congeniality. Oh, okay. The only thing we're not going to include is going to be the Verse the World, which is the only like all-star season that got it. And, it. and the main reason we're not including it, it was a three-way tie. Oh. That's that's half the cast for UK vs. the World. Yeah, that's unnecessary. That's silly. Right. So that's not included. And J.A. also called me the Rita Redner of drag, who's a comedian. Oh, nice. I love that for you. Do you know the difference between a government bond and a man? The bond matures! <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely incredible! <laughs> Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like the video, and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Plus, you're helping support the channel. Now you can also support the channel by tipping on Venmo or Cash App like these fine folks did. It's Sean Paul R, Adam K. The Adams love me because we got Adam K and we got Adam D, who Adam D, quoting verbatim in his little comment, Mommy Mangle, make me moist. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I don't I, get to work on that. I, I feel like they're telling me that I do make them moist. Oh, not. Good. I guess it could be looked at as a demand. <laughs> I guess it is more that. But I was just thinking, like, because they're talk calling me Mama Mangle, I'm picturing him talk like a baby, like, Mama Mangle, make me moist. Like, just telling me, this oh, is wow. what you do to me, Mommy. Wow. How do you feel about that? I'm disturbed now, but, you know, I support you. You got some money out of it. Aroused. Yeah, you know. And then finally, Kaysen V, who Kaysen, was one of our favorites, always coming through for us. But they were like, it's been a little while. And they called me the Marina Menunos of drag. Do you know her? <laughs> Marina Menunos. No, yeah, she does, know. like, entertainment reporting. But back in the day, I don't know if you had this at your school, but they used to do this thing, like, I think it was once a week, where they would show us this news program called Channel One. Did you ever have that? No. Before she was even like a famous reporter, she used to be on that. Oh. So I, I knew her since I was a kid. Oh my gosh, crazy. Comment below if you know Channel One. I went to Tip me if you know school, Channel One. So. Uh huh. I went to Catholic school, so I don't oh, know. We didn't have I went to public like school. That. I think it was just like keep the kids entertained for this time. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the lowest ranking congenialities and work our way up to the highest. From placement 12 all the way to, to runner up, there is somebody, at least one person at every single placement. Really? And there's we're gonna see also like which placements happen the most often. There's a few placements that like, the bulk of the congenialities are there. Oh. We're starting off with the lowest, which is 12th place oh. uh, for Anubis on Canada season three, Canada, UK season three, and cornbread on season 14. Wow. Yes. Now, the difference between these, though, is Anubis was the first out on her season. The only first out Miss Congeniality ever, Anubis. Wow. So, I mean, while she was there, she was very Impactful to, the, to her sissies. Yeah. yeah. They they loved and appreciated her, and I love yeah, that. Out of most of the congenialities, it was one of the most surprising be for for me as an audience member, yeah. because we didn't get to know her like that. But, you know, the girls vote. That's the other thing with congenialities as we look at them. Mm -hmm. The bulk of these are voted on now by the cast, but some of our legacy seasons, seasons one through nine, 
those are voted on by the, fans. the audience. Right. Yeah. So it's right. not like the peer, the girls thought that. Mm -hmm. And because the girls had such a different opinion, that's why it changed. Yeah, exactly. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> well, I love that for Anubis. And then, of course, with Cornbread, I mean, she went home because of an aunt of an injury. So right. like, she wasn't early out, but she wasn't, she, a few people went before her, but also she was extremely impactful in her short time there. Yeah. She made a huge impact. She still made a huge impact on the show, even after she had left. Like Absolutely. she was talked about throughout the entire season by literally almost every single person. Even and the winner Paul. thanked her Yes. for getting the knee injury because they wouldn't have won without that. I know. Like Cornbread's ankle got its whole own shot, shout out by the winner. Right. So. Um, maybe it's Cornbread's ankle that's Miss Congenial. <laughs> <laughs> she did tell a story on our channel about how when they all first got together, she had brought, God, what was it? She brought them oh, something. Oh, yeah. She all brought them like j rocks. Was or, it stones? Like, crystals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so like she went out of her way to make everyone else feel comfortable because you could tell going into the workroom, she was ready for the moment in her life. Yeah. She was so comfortable that it made the other girls, the nerves look worse. Yeah. But it's nice that she didn't like hone in on that yeah. she went out of her way to make them feel comfortable as well i know i love that that is very congeniality yeah cornbread's amazing and was well deserved for sure yes 11th place we only have one it's thailand season two it is maya biharo ah. she was 11th place and that okay. that cast had 14 people so she was still an early out of course she was i do remember her crying quite a bit being open with her emotions mm. she's very open with her emotions on her season gotcha yeah no i feel bad because like i've definitely watched the seasons and i'm like remember her but clearly she made a big impact on the season like you said and i mean i think when the girls vote it is the most special mm -hmm. so because it, obviously it's the most authentic right and it's just a difference between being like the audience fan favorite versus being your the people in the room your peers favorite yeah. they're both special yeah but yeah for the title of congeniality it means more i think from your peers. I think so too. Tenth place, we actually have three. Oh. We have Cynthia Lee Fontaine, Miss Cuckoo on season eight, mm -hmm. La La Ri on season 13, and Samantha Ballantyne on Espana season two. Wow. And I will say like these three Miss Congenialities, I think are some of the most loved. They totally make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like Cuckoo, I mean, obviously like she made a huge impact. She was even brought back the next season. And she's still just so heartwarming and like still to this day on Twitter, she goes she goes and supports everyone's stuff all the time. I know. Yeah. Like I love Cuckoo and like I don't, there's always so many great stories too. Like I've met her and she's amazing and lovely and she's just got that wonderful um Warm. reputation. Yeah. And then of course La La Ri. Oh my gosh. La La, yeah. Like I feel like with Cuckoo and La La, they were both people that every time they were on the screen they like they made you smile because they, they were so warm and fuzzy. La La was so warm and so relatable. Like mm -hmm. she was on that season with people with just high whore drag. Yeah. And like you felt for her. Yeah, you did. With some of that. But she was so lovable that you wanted her to keep going. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Lala has also given us the famous bag moment. And yeah, she it was like Miss Congeniality because she's so sweet, but also like very like underdog. And you're just like, exactly. She's just so relatable. Now, also, I will say with her cast, even though that's a extremely talented cast, I don't think there was a ton of options for Congeniality because she was somebody that we pegged as being the Congeniality of that season. Definitely. You had a lot of people that or are in some of those spots that typically get the congeniality like Utica like Olivia Lux mm. but there was this undertone throughout the season especially later on where like their authenticity was questioned by her peers correct by their peers by their peers right exactly the girls loved Samantha on her season from an audience and she was funny in the workroom she was yeah from an audience perspective I didn't warm up to her as much it was frustrating because she was uh -huh. the comedy queen and she was in the she, besides what akasha back on season one of us she's the only person to be in the bottom like three times in a row yeah yeah uh, she was in the bottom all three of her episodes mm -hmm. yeah and so it was frustrating for us for that and that she wasn't like rising to the challenge no and then we were just getting like but the girls a, don't care about a that. lot of the stripping and the t like looking like literally looking like a baby on stage the repetitiveness of that yeah too, was, was a and, lot. <laughs> I'm like, oh, the baby is out again. 
Yeah, it would be shocking that she kept continuing. Yes, you know. yes. So, but when she, remember though, when she went home, mm -hmm. the girls were like distraught. Right. So she must have really been bringing like mother energy. She really made them laugh a lot in the workroom. Yeah. At ninth place, we've got two Canada queens, season one and two of Canada, Tainomi Banks and Suki Doll. For a while, I was like, Ninth place is congeniality there. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Tainomi was also somebody who didn't get a lot of, well, she never really got praise from the judges. Mm -hmm. It didn't always really line up with what we saw, in my opinion. Right. And I could totally see, because she already was like a motherly figure in real life, and so many of them knew her already. It, it does make sense. Yeah, completely makes sense. And then Suki was a lot of fun. Yeah, Suki was so much fun. I was very happy for Suki because I think she could have even gone farther in the competition. She, she was good. Yeah, I mean, both of these queens were felt like they were cut way too short and weren't, weren't appropriately judged for what they presented. Mm -hmm. Eighth place, one of the more controversial ones as well in terms of eliminations, it's Anita Wiglet on Down Under Season 1. Right, yeah, absolutely. It was a big shock when Anita went. She was honestly one of the only girls giving me comedy, giving me funny, mm -hmm. and her personality was just so upbeat and pure and i don't know they're just you could tell there's she didn't seem like she had a mean bone in her body this is one where like yeah once again it totally made sense that she was congeniality when we heard that she really was amazing and i think she had even won a challenge Maybe she won a statue yeah, yeah exactly and then she went home you send the and then ugh. anyway i don't want to revisit. <laughs> don't get down don't go down that i road. don't want to revisit season one of down under but... so hopefully she'll get to show I mean, she'll get to show more because she's coming back, period. But hopefully yeah. she'll get treated appropriately. But like we just saw with those first two Canada ones, it doesn't always happen. It doesn't always happen. Doesn't. I mean, I, I guess the reality is from what we see as the audience and what the judges see, it can't always be perfect, right? Like, mm -hmm. it just, there's no way that it can always be right on point. But she was one, especially on that particular season, that it just did not feel like her time at all. Right. For instance, Lala and, and Cynthia, they were so lovable on those seasons, but it didn't feel like it wasn't, like... It, they could have lasted a few more weeks, but it wasn't like they needed to go. Like, I, she could have gone all the way to the end for me, Anita. Oh, yeah. She was one of my main picks to win. And so when she went home, I was like, this is... Yeah. Riga Morris. Riga Morris. Seventh place. Going back in the vault, it's Ivy Winters. Yes. And it's me, Valentina. Valentina. Mm -hmm. Give it up for fan favorite. The, the woman who changed the world and changed the rules of congeniality forever. She really did. Uh, I mean, it's and it's so funny, too, because Ivy Winters is... Very much that epitome of Miss Congeniality. Like, of course, hands down, she would win that. She was just... Especially with that cast. I know, right? Like, again, the most iconic top six ever. Mm -hmm. Yet, no one was, like, a congenial person. Nope. Well, Jinx either. was, but they wouldn't vote for her. Like, she, she right. won the season, so she don't need that. Right, but. right. She won money. But, yeah, so Ivy was the perfect choice. And then Valentina. She, yeah, she... She was the fan favorite. She was the fan favorite, and that was about it. But how bold. I mean, that's never happened in any other season of Drag Race where the girls were just like, I'm sorry, but no. She's not Miss Congeniality. <laughs> Give it up for fan favorite. I just... Right. It's it's, it's one of the most iconic, iconic moments ever. Yeah. 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 I'm just so Quoted obsessed. all the time. Who would have been Congeniality of that season if it wasn't for her? Oh, gosh. Peppermint. Peppermint. Been, oh, totally. Peppermint it gives that energy for sure. I think if that would have been on currently... Like if that, if that The girls cast, would have totally voted for her. Yeah, Peppermint would have yeah. got it. Like, cause then you've got, the top the top four themselves are likable, mm -hmm. yet not necessarily congenial. Right. Uh, and then you've got fifth place Alexis Michelle. Michelle right. Nina Bonina Brown wouldn't get it either. <laughs> no. Nope. Obviously Valentina wouldn't have got, and then you got Aja Ferret. Like, honestly, unless they did vote for like an early out, like James Mansfield. Right. Peppermint's one of the Peppermint only choices. Is the only choice, right. Sixth place, this is an iconic wow, spot yeah. for Miss Congeniality. One of our spots that has the most, but not the most. Mm. We've got five queens, Monet Exchange on season 10, season 11, Nina West. Mm -hmm. I almost said flowers. I know. Season 12, Heidi in Closet. Oh. Season one of France, Ellipse. And then down under season two, Yuri Guy. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I was going to say when the, you were talking about like a spot. This is one of those spots. Yeah, I was like, I feel like sixth place is really going to be like the it's, congeniality spot. Yeah. And and for like, what, three years in a row, yeah, it, was a, it, was. Yeah, it was a thing. Yeah, that's so fun. I don't know. I think it's perfect. It, it honestly makes sense because this is really about halfway-ish through yeah. the season, so you've gotten to see enough of everybody. And they almost all make it to the finale. Exactly. Yeah. Ellipse and Yuri got kind of made it halfway, mm -hmm. but in terms of the U.S. seasons, especially because they're so long and there's so many more queens, yeah, like Monet, 
Nina and Heidi almost made it to the finale. Yeah, they just did. Just an episode or two away. Yeah, you're right, because typically we're going into those now at the top four. Right. That's what's different than the, yeah, the international. Yeah. These are some of the most, especially Monet, Heidi, and Nina. All three of them. We would have voted for these people, too. Exactly. Like, without a doubt. Monet, I would say that Monet's, I think some people, like, if the audience voted, it could have been Miss Cracker. But Monet, for me, was my choice. Yeah. Uh, but Nina and Heidi... Undisputable. 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 Yeah. And Monet, the first ever congeniality to win the show. I know. Come back and win. Oh my god. I think I still. I, yeah, I mean, I get, yeah, we're looking at him and she's the only winner so far. So far. <laughs> now fifth place, this is the spot with the most. Wow. We've got Pandora Box, Binda La Creme, Katya, Blue Hydrangea, Tabitha, and Vivian Vanderpuss. Ooh, well, and Blue, she's won. I did say Blue, didn't I? Did I not? Yeah, well, you said um, Monet was the only one to come back and win. Oh, and okay. Blue came, Blue came I back. thought you were saying I didn't say her name oh, as I was listing them. <laughs> yeah, so we do have another winner. Yeah, Blue came there back and won. You came versus the world. This is, this is the spot. Uh, fifth and sixth are definitely the spot for congeniality. Talk and about icons. This is an icon spot for sure. For the first three, Pandora, Binda La Creme, and Katya, they were definitely those queens that the audience just absolutely fell in love with on their seasons yeah. and wanted to make it to the finale but they just didn't. And so like, that's part of the reason we voted. In terms of like, if the cast would have voted that way, I don't, especially like <laughs> season six, they've, yeah. been, they've been very open that, that it would have been Jocelyn and that does make more sense. Yeah. I think Katya probably would have been the one that would have still gotten it on her season for I sure. I think so too, yeah. All the international ones, the cast votes. So that's what the cast voted for. That's amazing. Blue is so shady though. It's surprising they <laughs> voted for her, but you know, she does have a good heart. Yeah, she's like shady with the heart of gold. Yeah. Yeah. Totally, I love that. Like it's with a wink and a smile. Like, yeah. Oh, you're ugly. Mm -hmm. Love you. <laughs> oh, okay, well. Uh, Tabitha was was pretty funny on her season of Holland. Mm -hmm. She did have a lot of relationships with the other girls. And oh, especially when you think about it from that perspective of like making the girls laugh and feel comfortable in the workroom. Mm -hmm. That's really where I think the, a lot of times they vote from. Yeah, I think that's real. I think she also gives a lot of like the mom energy. Yeah. And so... Well, she was Envy Peru's. One of, one of two Envy Peru's, Peru's moms mom. that were there. On the her, same season. And that's what was so funny about that season was her one of her moms won the season. Yep. Vanessa Van Cartier, and then her other mom was Congeniality. I know, like, so funny. And she was there to crown both of them. I know. Doesn't surprise me at all. And then, like, I don't know. I think Vivian was a good choice for Miss Congeniality. I don't know. Do, who, do you know who else you would have chosen for that? I feel like Jada Shada gives me a lot of Congeniality Ooh, energy. I could have seen Jada Shada um, in Congeniality. Giselle could have been Congeniality. Oh my gosh, right? Um, because she did help so many people with sewing. And speaking of that, the other person, uh, Lady Boom Boom. Oh, Lady Boom Boom. Throughout the first oh, couple of design yeah. challenges, she helped everyone. She helped everybody, right. So they were very likable people. Yeah. So I could see that too. Oh well, yeah, they're, they're Canadian. That was <laughs> well, and then you have Fierce. <laughs> She's my Miss Congeniality. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. She's literally the DW of drag from yeah, Arthur. I saw like, that. Like she too. gives that energy of sometimes just silly and mean for no reason. Yeah, but, but it's still, like cute. It's really lovable and cute, yeah. <laughs> Well, even though this is the spot that has the most, we're not done because we I said we're going all the way up to second place. Mm. Next, we have fourth place. Four through six are the most common, wow. the biggest sections. We've got Yara Sophia, Latrice Royale, B. Ella, Poopy Poison, and Laquisha B. La Bamba. Oh. Laquisha B. Laquisha La Bamba. That's yes. hard to say. Yeah. Especially after so long not saying it. I know. Yara and Latrice, iconic from season three and four. Latrice and Katya and Heidi are like the ultimate congenialities ever. The beloveds. So she is, yeah, she's one of the ultimates. And Yara is just so fun and so wacky. Although she wasn't congenial on All Stars. No. All Stars 6. Not at all. Oh my they God. Got, they got her out the door. Right. I was going to say. And she said F you on the way out. I know. She always has an iconic exit. She really does. Whether it's sad or mad. I think once again, just. From well, those her are the season. two. Those are the two options. <laughs> That's matter said. From her season, though, I'm also kind of like, I don't know who else would have. Oh. But there's not, they were not congenial oh, girl. in her season at all. Right. Like, season three is not a congenial season. They and she, she was like her own unique chaos on her own that was fun to watch. That's why she's appropriate for that for me. Right. Honestly, like. She kind of stayed out of it for the most part. Yeah. I honestly think Alexis Mateo would have been the only other option. Right. Yeah, because the Heathers weren't likable. Shangela was not particularly likable. <laughs> no. And then all the early outs weren't either. No. Like, no one was. Exactly. But Latrice makes perfect sense. Yeah. B. Ella, I do remember her. She had a really 
cute relationship with Darius Stahl. Oh, Darius Stahl. Her and Darius Stahl were really adorable together in the workroom and all of that. So you got to see their friendship, which made you mm. really fall in love with them more. I, that's what I remember yeah. being really likable about them. I love Darius too. She was fun. She yeah. was really funny. Poopy, España season one, falls just in line with season two, Samantha Valentine, where it's like that comedy queen. They're a little bit crunchier. Mm -hmm. But unlike Samantha, Poopy Poison was so good at the challenges. I was going to say, like, Poopy made up for her crunchiness in the challenges. I, I don't know. I just, I'm sorry. I guess here is me being shady. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, but, like, Samantha does not give me miscongeniality. I was just not a fan of anything that she delivered on the show. Are you so, talking about Samantha or Poopy? Or, sorry, not Samantha or Poopy. Who's this? Laquisha. Laquisha LaBamba. Yeah, she I just, was sweet. I didn't get it. She was sweet though. I didn't get the hype. And there was a lot of drama and a lot of tension between the queens throughout that little season of Italy. That's true. And she was very nice consistently. That's why I think the girls voted for her. Okay. Do I think she should have come in fourth place? Absolutely not. Like, that was kind of ridiculous. Maybe like, that's more of my issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With Poopy, I was sh extremely shocked she was congeniality, to be honest. Yeah. Because she was so shady She's... in her confessionals, specifically towards Killer Queen for some reason. I know. It was like, for some reason, I felt like she felt like Killer Queen was like lower hanging fruit or something. And there was somebody in that cast that actually was congeniality, and it was uh, Arancho. Yeah. Like, Arancho was... That person, she was next to anyone. Anytime they were going through something, she was supporting everyone. Yeah, to me, it was almost like Poopy got up just because of her, like, reputation already that she had. Yeah. So... Well, and, you know, when they when the international seasons vote, for the most part, like, these ones where they crown them on the show, they don't get to leave the bubble before they pick the congeniality. Mm -hmm. They don't get to see the confessionals. So they don't get to see all the bits that actually air. Got you know? You. So that can change. That's what changes our opinion. Yeah, definitely. Like, because she never was really shady in the workroom. It was just her confessionals. Right. Third place, we have one person, and it is Holland Season 1, Mama Queen. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I She was sweet. Yeah, she was sweet. I, I would have picked Sutter Jean. Yeah. But Sutter Jean also got into it with Abby. Mm -hmm. So that, you lose one vote there. But Mama Queen never really got into it with anyone and had a great heart. She, she was. was. Very sweet. She was just a very, like, that neutral, good, neutral good presence. Yeah. A lot of the cast was pretty likable mm -hmm. but when you get to the folks that made it further like Janie couldn't have been she was she was quite harsh no <laughs> and I was then, so obsessed with yeah, her I love so. her so I think that she was a good option yeah. well that brings us to our runner ups oh. there's two runner ups that were crowned Miss Congeniality ever Nina Flowers yeah. and Bimini Bomb Boom Lash. oh okay yeah. and they both make sense definitely makes sense yeah. yeah Nina is just just such an icon in every way like, in such a cool representation of drag, like, especially on the first season, on season ever. One, yeah. Like, so she was like groundbreaking. She was a trendsetter and she was just so, so sweet lovable and lovable. Yeah. And like, oh, uh, she was definitely at the time my choice to win. So I love that she got congeniality. And then Bimini really, I think, just surprised everybody in every way because the, her starting out of the season was so rough. And then yeah. when she ended, you're like, oh, my God, I love her. And she's a total icon. Yeah, I feel like both of these out of any runner ups are definitely well deserving. I feel like the only runner up that we mentioned that I can think of that deserves it is also Peppermint. Yeah. But other than that, like, yeah, these totally make sense because they are so lovable. I don't know what the rules were, but it feels like sometimes the top three isn't eligible or something. Yeah. Top four. Um, so if it was somebody outside of them, I would say that like Angina, Angina. could have totally yeah. been a congeniality and I wouldn't blink twice at it. Oh, for sure. Honestly, in terms of like queens who didn't win too, it's like they're two of the ones that people wanted the most that were the most passionate about. I was going to say, so it's almost like consolation or something in a way. Yeah. So yeah, so we have two people who have come back and won. If you ever go on Drag Race, this placement shows you like, okay, I came in sixth. I got a good shot at good being shot. congeniality. Right, right. Fifth, even better. Right. Yeah. I was shocked when I put it together that there was somebody in places 12 through 2. Yeah, that's it's kinda really cool. cool. Good job to the you know person that suggested the video. Yeah, J.A. When it comes to like fifth place, a lot of those girls have already come back. A lot of the congenialities in general have come back, especially the U.S. ones. Yeah. Out of the U.S. queens that haven't come back, you've got Ivy Winters, one of the only early ones that hasn't at all. And Ivy doesn't do drag she like that. She doesn't do drag like really Speaking anymore. of that, because people always are, are like, she did once three years ago. You can't say she quit drag. She, she's retired for now. I would love to see Cornbread back out of, <sighs> oh out of God, any of, of the ones from the current seasons that haven't come back. I would love to see Cornbread come back. Mm -hmm. I'm really shocked that like Nina West hasn't come back. Yeah, I feel like Nina, she's like, 
She's been so focused on the musicals yeah, and things she's Yeah, she's, doing. like, doing other things. The Disney stuff. I feel like for some people, like, once you get on an experienced drag race, you might be like, well, that was nice for a taste, maybe not for a swallow. You know, and I, I think, like, when it came to the drag race setting, I think Nina kind of struggled to find ever find her stride. I think she would do well. I like, think she's, she'd do better, hopefully. She did so good. At, it was, she was truly one of those folks that was, like, the fashion. Just like Monet, who won? Yeah. I know a lot of people want Bimini on some sort of all-stars or versus the world. Yeah. But I just don't really see that for her right now where she's at. She's out there killing it as a model. Like, yeah. That's where it seems like I she's keeping her focus, and I want her to stay focused. And then come back when she wants to, not because, like, everyone's saying it. And she right. is a tourist, so she's not going to come back until... She's, she's Actually, oh, that's weird. A lot of these folks are tourists, too, by the way. Pandora, Katya, Valentina, mm. Bimini. Wow. Oh, my gosh. I can't I even imagine me being congeniality. I could easily see me being edited to be the villain. <laughs> don't can, you think? I could kind of see it. I could easily see it. I don't know. because I, I could edit myself that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're very into being like, to doing the deep conversation. So I think that would be like a redeeming thing. Like you're not mm. scared to get vulnerable and just like be like, and this is what's wrong with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so like, I could see you kind of getting a villain-esque at it, but like a lovable villain. I would, I can see myself being this congeniality. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like you, you are, you would be the congeniality of this channel for sure. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I think I would go in uh, in a weird way just being like that's the one i'm gonna win i hope everyone likes me yeah <laughs> like i would also bring people which i always think everyone hates things. me so yeah that's true yeah you would do that you would make sure you want to make sure everyone's comfortable like mm -hmm. that's part of your personality yeah kind of like cornbread yeah, yeah. Everybody she's also in her sign. Gift baggies. I know, yeah, she's a cat porn. I should have got everyone signs. That was a video suggestion of like doing winter zodiacs or something oh, like that. Yeah. Maybe one day. Yeah. But then sometimes people yell at us for talking about it. Oh, whatever. Anyway, let us know what you think about the congenialities and their placements. We're going to head on out of here for now, and I have one last thing to say. Glad you got to see us. Bye. Bye. <laughs>